Hello! In this video we're going to be looking at probabilities, events, and equally likely outcomes. This is something that you'd see in the first couple of weeks of a finite course. I know, uh, for example, it's currently taught in roughly second week of M118 at Indiana University. This corresponds with section 2.1 in the book Finite Mathematics by Daniel P. Mackey and Maynard Thompson, and I'm going to be using one of the recommended problems um, that I think is kind of a fundamental problem. And if you don't really understand this problem, you're going to have pro issues. I'm going to use problems a million times. You're going to have issues with a lot of the other problems in this section. So when we're talking about probabilities, an important thing to remember is all your probabilities have to equal 1. So uh, let's go through the problem. It's a pretty fast problem, and I don't think it's too difficult once you kind of get it. But it can be a little bit of a mind bender, and there's a lot of numbers, and it can look a little scary. So let's go ahead. Suppose an experiment has four outcomes, and the frequencies of the outcomes are 3 over n, 11 over n, 5 over n, and 7 over n. What does n have to be for these frequencies to reflect probabilities? Well, you might think that, um, suppose an experiment has four outcomes, so you might be trying to set something equal to four, and I'm going to tell you, that would be a mistake. They are giving us information that's valuable, but you'll notice there are four outcomes, and the frequencies of the outcomes, and then there's four different fractions, and so that's where that four comes in. So let's go ahead and write down what we know. So there are four different outcomes. So the first one is 3 over n, the second one is 11 over n, the third one is 5 over n, and the fourth one is 7 over n. And um, again, if, if this is probabilities and there's only four outcomes, then that means all of these, when you add them up, have to equal 1. And you know, all of a sudden, this seems like a much, much easier problem. So, you know, 3 plus 11, I, I like to break things down. So we've got 14 over n plus 5 plus 7 is 12 over n equals 1. And then we have 26 over n equals 1. And so for uh, these to be probabilities, n has to equal 26. And that's our answer. And you know, you might see this on some homework, you might see these on the test, but if you don't even if you don't see these, if you don't understand this part, you're going to find a lot of the problems that we're going to be doing from here on out a little bit challenging. So just kind of get comfortable that when you're talking about probabilities, when you add them all up, they have to equal either one or one hundred percent. So that's really the only tricky part in this section um, that, that's kind of fundamental. So uh, just give it a shot, play around with it, and I think, I think you'll be okay with it.